Good evening. Uh, good evening to everybody. Let's turn on the webcam. Can you see me? I hope so. Ciao to everybody from Francesco and welcome. I see that you are still coming, so let's wait just a couple of seconds, but uh, we have so many topics this evening and I'm sure we will have a lot of fun. So welcome to this color management uh, from theory to practice uh, webinar. That's, uh, this webinar is offered you from by Calibrite and BenQ with the cooperation of uh, Stavanger Photo that is going also to offer you a wonderful discount at the end of this webinar. So it's worth to wait uh, at the end of the webinar at least for that. And I think that we can start because uh, again, uh, many of you are already in and we have so many topics to discuss. So a brief introduction of myself uh, and later I will turn off the webcam because uh, I think it's nicer you will focus on the charts uh, instead of my face. <laughs> so ciao everybody, my name is Francesco, Francesco Gola. I'm a seascape photographer and um, I'm based in Italy. You can find me as usual on social media like uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook or wherever you want. And I'm in love with photography and uh, teaching actually because I'm a photographer since uh, 15 years ago. And uh, in the past 10 years I also started the, uh, this kind of educational process because I'm really in love in teaching what I've learned during the during my experience out there in the field with my camera. Not only about photography, but also other, let's say, technical stuff. And uh, for example, the one we are going to talk tonight, so the color management. Uh, when I'm not in my studio, I love to travel the world because uh, again, I'm a seascape photographer, so I'm really in love with the landscape photography in general, but I'm really focused to uh, see with the sea. Um, and so well when i'm not again in my office you will find me maybe along the coast to capture the beauty of this world i don't want to spend more time on myself but i want to just leave you my website uh, of course because so you can check my picture i'm in love with this kind of stuff that are like long exposure of uh, seascapes but also because uh, um, in my website apart from finding my picture and maybe uh, other workshops, uh, uh, you will find a section, a blog section, where you, where I wrote already some articles about the topics that we are going to discuss tonight. So if at the end of this uh, webinar you have a question or you want to go deeper to some topics, uh, you can start from there and then you can maybe send me a message, a mail, and uh, I will be more than in love to, to continue to talk uh, about this topic with you. So let's start uh, with our webinar about color management. And uh, well, I, I, I spent some time in uh, deciding how to, to do this webinar because we are going to talk uh, about something that sometimes is considered really complicated. In my opinion, uh, actually is not complicated at all. And sometimes we, we love to overcomplicate this topic because uh, uh, yes, there is a lot of uh, technical things behind what we are going to see tonight. But my my idea this evening is to try to, um, well, I will turn off my webcam so you, you will see better the charts. Uh, so the idea of this evening is to share with you my, my experience, my knowledge about this uh, wonderful topic that is color management, because uh, I think is absolutely uh, important for every photographer or video maker uh, or anybody who is in love with uh, digital things in front of a screen to be aware at least about certain topics. Uh, we are going to simplify many of these topics, but uh, well, my mission tonight is uh, at the end of this workshop to give you, let's say, the, the general uh, overview about this uh, color management topic and to let you at least uh, understand why it's so important to uh, consider the color management a part of uh, every photographer's uh, workflow. So I want to really start from the beginning and um, from the expectation we have when we look at our pictures in, in a screen, for example. So for me, at least every time I look at one of my pictures in the screen, uh, in my monitor, I want to see this picture with many colors 
and accurately. So I think this is really the key of the discussion tonight. So uh, to see many colors and to see them in the most accurate way that is possible. And we will split the discussion tonight uh, in, uh, in these two teams. So how can we see many color in our screen or if it's easy to, to do that? and how to see them in a in a really accurate way because we are not sure that what we are going to see in a screen is the correct thing or not so uh, in my opinion in any case uh, uh, to be able to see correctly uh, what we have in front of us it should be a prerequisite so we we, we really not to have to take it as granted but uh, we have to keep in mind that, that this is really something that is absolutely very important so uh, if, you, if we start really from the beginning, we should start about talking about colors. And don't worry, we are not going to discuss again super technical stuff. But if you ever decide to, uh, I don't know, to go to Wikipedia or to any other website to, or to just to Google what, is, what color is, uh, you will find probably endless pages of technical stuff like uh, this chart, but somewhere, I'm sure that you will find at the end of the discussion something that will say that at the end the color is our brain visual perception. So it's something that actually doesn't exist because it's not a property of the matter but it's something that is generated inside our brain. And I think this is a really uh, key point because um, when we start to think that our world around us is not exactly in color as we uh, we think, uh, we start to understand that maybe even representing a color with a monitor or to see a, a printed image with the right color could be a bit more challenging than expected because again, uh, we is not granted anymore. So let's uh, try at the beginning to find a way how to describe uh, colors because we said that for us as human beings, we have the, the possibility to see the world in colors uh, but of course, we have some certain limits, so we can see just an amount of color, not endless color, because again, if we go back to the nerdy what, what color is chart on Wikipedia, we will see that uh, we, we can just see a portion of uh, the, let's go back to check the electromagnetic spectrum, so a tiny portion of it. Uh, so how can we represent the amount of colors that we can see? And well, many people try to, to find a solution to this question. And at the end, uh, is, uh, I'm pretty sure that you already encountered in your photography experience this kind of uh, shape that could be, or this graph, a colored thing, a colored uh, patch on the screen. Uh, and we can say uh, that this area is going to represent tonight all the colors that we can see. So it means that if we can see uh, a color is inside this area, if we are not able to see it, it will be outside. At the center of this area, we have what is called uh, CA illuminant, so the white point, let's say. And on the edge of this area, we will have the colors uh, at the highest saturation that is possible to see for our eyes. So don't worry, we again, we are not going to go deep to this topic, but what you have to keep in mind this evening is that uh, this area will represent uh, the colors that we are able to see. So at this point, uh, uh, we need to make a step forward because we know how many colors we can see, that is this area again, uh, but now the question could be that um, how our monitor is able to uh, display correctly colors. And, and this is a, another very good question because again, uh, if we are not able, I mean, again, if uh, the world is in colors only in our brain, uh, how can we have a device like a monitor that is able to reproduce color? So that's another, again, a great question. And at the end, we can say that, uh, the colors are represented in, in our monitor or in, let's say, in real life uh, through what are called models. And I'm uh, absolutely sure that you already encountered color models. So basically, a color model is a way to mix a certain amount of colors in order to create uh, other ones. So 
uh, our monitor is working with what's called the RGB model. So basically we have some light, colored light source, blue, uh, green and red, that mix it together, they are creating all the color that we are able to see in our monitor. And so far, I'm, I'm sure it's quite easy and it's quite intuitive. So you're mixing lights and you're creating other colors. But we have a problem. So the model alone is not able to give me the exact color information. So for example, if I'm um, creating uh, a green with a green light, I'm not able just with the model to, to say if this green is like say a saturated green, a pale green, a bright green. I just know that it's a green, but I don't know anything else about this green. So in order to, to create colors in the way uh, we see on a picture, we need something that is called mapping function. That is something that for sure we are not going to, to check in details, but you have just to understand that when we apply this kind of uh, mapping function uh, to the, uh, this abstract mathematical representation of colors that is the model, we are going to obtain what is called color space. That I'm sure that is something that at least once in your life you heard or you probably have read in some articles, and it's something that is absolutely essential uh, for us in order to represent colors. Why? Because uh, try to think uh, about uh, your, um, your camera. Maybe you are on the field, you are taking pictures with your camera, and I absolutely hope that you're uh, capturing your images uh, in RAW, so not as a JPEG, but as a RAW file. Well, I don't know if you already know, but when you capture your images in RAW, actually you're not capturing an, an image, but you're capturing, let's say, an amount of data uh, that in order to be to try to be converted into an image uh, they need something so basically the raw file the file that you have uh, in, uh, in your sd card or in uh, in your hard drive basically are just uh, if you open without uh, photoshop or any other say um, image visualization uh, they are like uh, just an amount of numbers that are meaningless for us so in order to transform this raw file into an image we need to apply the color space so the color space is something that is able to translate numerical data that are captured by our camera into something that we can visualize so at the end the question is what is a color space uh, we can think uh, at a color space uh, like uh, the the painter's color palette and basically is that is something really important to remember, is basically a human convention. So the, the color space is something that is designed by humans, so by a company for, uh, or uh, by people. I mean, I mean, so it's something that is there because it's designed by somebody. And again, it's like a painter's color palette. What does it mean? That if we take our raw image and then we take a painter's color palette, uh, we are able to paint our image into, into our screen. So uh, according to the different color palette that we are going to use, we are going to obtain a picture that could be slightly different one from the other. And we are going to this very soon. The, the important thing to keep in mind is that like a real painter's color palette, more colors we have, uh, more possibility we have in order to transform our raw data into an image. So according to the color palette that I'm going to use, uh, we are probably obtaining different results because uh, uh, one thing is, uh, is that I'm painting with uh, uh, just a few colors. Another thing is that I'm a painter like uh, Van Gogh and I have 100,000 of colors in front of me and I can paint with all the colors that I want. I'm absolutely sure that uh, words like Photo Pro RGB, Adobe RGB, sRGB are something that uh, are already known. Uh, so this Photo Pro, Pro Photo RGB, Adobe RGB, and sRGB are basically color spaces. So according to let's say the size of these color spaces, uh, we can paint again our raw file 
into uh, we can transform in our raw file into an image when i mean size i i, I don't feel i mean i don't mean the the physical size of the colors palette but the amount the, how many colors uh, we have in this palette so for example the srgb is uh, a color space that is quite tiny because we don't have many colors uh, in order to to paint our our image on the other side for example for pro photo rgb is a color space that uh, is designed to be so big that is containing actually even colors that are not even possible to be seen by our eyes so it's something that if you remember the colored patch that we yeah, so at the beginning, uh, they will be outside of this colored patch. So they are something that we can't even see. So again, larger is the color palette, more colors we have to describe the data in our raw file. What does it mean? So let's take, for example, this image that I captured in a wonderful sunrise when I was in Menorca Island in Spain. So if we open this picture in Photoshop and we magnify uh, this picture really to the, to the pixel size, we will see something like that. So our image is composed by, uh, in this case, 48 million pixels. So tiny square uh, that have a specific information in terms of color and brightness. And this information of each of this tiny square is contained in the raw file because again the raw file basically is an amount of data that is describing in a numerical way all these tiny square into uh, into my captured by my um, the sensor of my camera so now we want to transform this data this tiny square into an image so we apply again a color space to our image and what does it happen when we apply different color spaces to uh, the same image? So again, let's consider this image. Let's consider that this image is created by 48 million of pixels of this tiny square. And let's take with a specific tool, uh, that's a mathematical representation, but it is really important that you can understand, uh, to let you understand. So if we take each of these tiny colored square and we try to put them uh, inside of our uh, CA diagram, so the area where we can see uh, that contain the color that we can see, you will see that if I apply uh, a color, different color spaces to the same image, I will obtain different results. So for example, with the sRGB colors, uh, I have less colors and so my representation in this uh, in this graphic is kind of different of the one on the right side where you can see for example I have more colors represented here so I'm using more colors in order to to create probably more uh, more use in the in the image so I will get more color details in my image so the next question, because at this point you can say, okay, no problem. So bigger the palette color is, better it is. So I will apply to my to my raw file the bigger the biggest one I have. So for example, we said that uh, Profoto RGB could be the best option. So the problem is that uh, that maybe your monitor is not able to reproduce all this color. Why? Because actually at the end, the, the monitor is just a, a physical device. It's something that was created by, by humans, so by companies. And of course, there are some technical limitations, for example. In fact, let's try again to take our picture. That is, uh, actually, this is a different picture from the one that I uh, showed you before. But in any case, let's take our diagram, let's say that like our colored diagram where we see all the colors that we can see. And let's put every pixel of our image inside this diagram. At this point, if I'm uh, putting also, if I'm uh, showing you uh, how many colors, that's what, is, what we call a standard monitor uh, we can reproduce, we will obtain an area like this triangle. So basically, 
uh, a monitor of uh, a laptop or uh, the office monitor that you probably have is able to represent something like that. And as you can see, we have some of our pixels that are outside of this, uh, of this triangle. And what does it mean? It means that our monitor will not be able to reproduce this color. So, of course, the red color that is maybe the orange color that is uh, outside of the, of the triangle will be represented by our screen, but it will not be represented with the color information that our camera captured. So we are losing information because we are going to approximize uh, with uh, some automatic algorithms, but we are going to approximize these colors and the one that are outside on the other end with uh, something that is probably close to them, but uh, that is not what you capture on the field. So maybe you, you, you spend uh, so many euro in a camera and in your photographic gear, you took a plane to go to Menorca Island, you, you woke up at 4 a.m. and then you took a beautiful uh, sunrise uh, and you know if you're a landscape photographer that it's not so easy to get nice sky every morning and then you go back home and you have a wonderful file. And then what, you, what is going to happen? You are going to lose all the color uh, just because your display is not, um, is not enough to show what your camera uh, just captured. In my opinion, uh, this is something that we should avoid at any cost because basically we are uh, restricting the potential of our image. So what's the solution to that? There are monitors that are called white gamut monitor. So there are some monitors that are designed uh, with the latest technologies available in order to represent uh, as, much as, as much color as is technically possible, basically. Uh, for example, now I'm using uh, a monitor that is called BenQ SW321C that is one of these uh, wide gamut monitor. If you check again this image, here you can see this new blue triangle that is the representation on, uh, of how many color this monitor is able to represent. One important thing is that actually the, 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 the amount of colors that can be represented that is called gamut is a tridimensional thing. But here, in order to simplify, we are just uh, uh, representing everything in a bi-dimensional uh, way, but at the end uh, it is absolutely the same. The, the important thing is that uh, is to consider that a wide gamut monitor is capable to show you what you really capture with your image. Um, so uh, every monitor has different characteristics. For example, this monitor is capable to cover uh, the hundred percent of the sRGB space and 99% uh, of Adobe RGB space. Every monitor, I mean, the capability of every monitor is represented comparing uh, his gamut to the gamut uh, of uh, a color space, a specific color space, because every, again, every color space is specifically designed for something. For example, uh, for us photographers, we are really used to hear about sRGB and Adobe RGB. And in a while, I will tell you why they are so important and why we should focus on wide gamut monitor capable to reproduce um, as much as possible of these two color spaces instead of uh, any other one. But it's really important to say that white gamut is just one of the uh, important characteristic of a monitor. Well, not the important features or characteristics, but the basic feature, because in my opinion, if you are a photographer or again, a video maker, you, you should consider your monitor as uh, exactly as you consider your camera or your lens. So it's part, is an essential part of your workflow. And again, uh, if, you, if you want to get most out of your picture, you, you need, you really need to be able to see uh, your picture in, a pro, in, in the best possible way. So white gamut is one of these uh, of this things. But a big question could be why uh, we should focus on... Interesting question. Oh, uh, sorry, that's my Siri that is activated by mistake. Uh, so uh, 
Okay, let's remove it because he's talking by himself. Uh, sorry, guys. So the, a good question could be why Adobe RGB and not to just focus on sRGB. So again, we have to, to keep in mind that color spaces are designed. So Adobe RGB, like sRGB actually, but Adobe RGB was designed by Adobe for a specific purpose. And we will see this purpose in a minute, but in, in the meanwhile, consider this, uh, this picture. So as you can see here, you will see that Adobe RGB is quite bigger than sRGB. So actually, uh, sRGB, if you want to know, is capable to reproduce only the 35% of the colors that our eyes can see. And this is basically nothing. Uh, and this was designed in the 90s uh, when the first color monitor were available on the market in order to define a kind of standard for visualization for the visualization of the colors but again that standard was created in the 90s when the technology was able to deliver uh, just uh, let's say what we call now today basic monitor so something that is really uh, nothing compared to the technology that we have today but Adobe RGB was created for something else. Again, we can represent in this, uh, that's why it was so important to introduce it at the beginning of the conversation. So if we check again this colored patch that is representing the color that we can see, uh, we can represent not only what is the gamut of the monitor that already we already know that uh, this triangle is considering we can consider this triangle like the gamut of uh, a standard monitor but we can also consider the we can represent the gamut of any of anything for example a piece of paper a sheet of paper so if we try to describe uh, on this chart uh, what is the gamut so the amount of colors that can be reproduced on a on on some photographic paper on a standard photographic paper we will get uh, something that is not anymore uh, on a triangular shape but is like a patch almost of this size and uh, of this shape what does it mean that uh, this specific photographic paper actually if you want to know this is the uh, Hanemul uh, um, Photorag Ultra Smooth I think yes so it's a very common and uh, super nice paper if you want to print your images is able to reproduce this amount of colors so as you can see immediately the gamut of the paper is bigger than the gamut of the monitor so if we are going to uh, display an image or if you want to print an image on this paper uh, you are going to have an amount of colors that you are not even able to see on the screen so it's impossible that you're going to print them in a proper way but if you are going to use a wide gamut monitor as you can see most the almost everything of the gamut of the paper is included is inside the triangle so it means that everything that we can see on the screen can be printed on the paper in a easy way because we can see what we are going to print and it's not by chance that the the wide gamut uh, shape is a triangular uh, is a triangle with this size because again it was designed it was specifically designed in order to to match the the world of printing so to match uh, a printed paper that again is with this shape that's very important because again uh, a wide gamut monitor is able to to let you see many colors and not only uh, all the colors that your camera that your camera is cap capable to capture but it let you it put you in the position to print the the image that you see on the screen on a fine art paper for example like the one that i told you before uh, being sure that you will see what you're going to print so you're going to print in uh, of course following all the good rules of printing but uh, you will be able to print uh, your images without any issue again uh, there are so many other features that we should keep in mind and i will uh, 
let's discuss just a few of them. Uh, another really important characteristic of monitor should be the, the panel uh, technology. Uh, in photography, I suggest you to consider the IPS uh, technology because uh, is, uh, IPS means in-plane switching. Basically, it's a technology that uh, uh, even if you are not looking at your screen uh, in front of it, uh, but you're moving left to right or in a with a different viewing angle, uh, the image will be the same because, of course, think that you are maybe uh, post-producing one of your image in a position and uh, it, just if you move uh, to the left, your image will look different in colors and in contrast. Of course, it would be a disaster. Um, and also, this technology, the in-plane switching, is able to provide a very wide gamut. So, of course, uh, in for us, for photographers, it's really important that this is the, uh, the technology of our screen. There are other technologies like the twisted pneumatic or the vertical alignment, but these are for other purposes like uh, gaming, for example. Uh, then the connectivity, in my opinion, is a very important topic because uh, uh, nowadays a screen should be capable to be connected to your laptop in the most uh, easy possible way. So, for example, my monitor now uh, the, again, the SW series, the 321C model, is able to co be connected with the USB-C. And this means that the USB-C cable is capable to uh, deliver not just the, the, um, the video signal, I mean the image signal, but also it can supply data and power. So, for example, I can, uh, with just the monitor, I can charge my laptop and I don't need any external uh, extra cable in order to, to communicate between the screen and uh, the, my, my computer, my laptop, when, for example, I'm calibrating my monitor. Again, the resolution is very important because uh, uh, that uh, is a very subjective topic, in my opinion. But for me, uh, if you have a panel with an higher resolution, uh, let you see your image, uh, let's see, in a better way. I mean, uh, that's a very uh, uh, easy to understand uh, picture, in my opinion. I mean, higher is the uh, pixel density in your screen, uh, probably nicer will be the, the feeling of uh, viewing your picture there. So, for example, the Bank USW 321C is a UHD panels, and this is, means that. Uh, is a 4K panel and is able to reproduce uh, very sharp images. In my opinion, it's very great, especially if you uh, are going to print them. But again, a uh, 2K monitor is absolutely okay, and maybe it could be your first step into a wide gamut monitor, also because it's a bit cheaper. If you just want to have a comparison, so uh, the picture uh, in proportion, I mean, the picture. This picture was taken with a Nikon D850, so it's 8,000 pixels on the long edge. Uh, with a, a monitor like the BenQ that I'm using, the SW321C, I'm able to see in, uh, in real size a huge portion of the image. And this is really good, especially, again, if you're going to print your images or if you want to have a super accurate uh, post-production uh, workflow on them. Again, uniformity is another important topic uh, because uniformity is the ability of the monitor to reproduce uh, a portion of the image in the same way uh, according, in, independently uh, where you are displaying that portion of the image in your screen. So a, a pixel that is uh, reproduced uh, on the top left uh, on the image, if I drag my picture to the right, uh, it should be reproduced in the same way on the right side of the screen. This seems to be a very stupid feature, but believe me, it's absolutely complicated to make uniform panels. And that's why uh, BenQ now is uh, implementing on the on his monitor like the third generation of uh, uniformity technology. So it's something really, really complicated. But again, it's important when you work on your picture that uh, the colors on your pictures are, uh, I mean, constant uh, in uh, independently of the position of the screen where you are reproducing them. At the end, uh, the last uh, important thing, in my opinion, to the last feature that I will really keep in mind is what is called uh, uh, um, 
lockup table, 3D lockup table. Basically, there are some monitors that um, have a, like a, an additional chip inside where you can store some information. Basically, uh, these kind of monitors are the ones that are capable of the what's so-called hardware calibration. So the hardware calibration that we are going to see in a few minutes is the kind of calibration that let you store some information inside your monitor directly. Um, in this way, we will be able to reproduce our color uh, even more accurately. And I think that's uh, another thing that is, of course, absolutely important. Uh, let's end this discussion about the monitors, uh, um, saying that, for example, BenQ is creating a different uh, range of monitor uh, according, of course, uh, of our specific need, because as we said at the beginning, there are monitors that are designed, for example, to be um, more uh, close as, as close as possible to the uh, Adobe RGB color space. So, for example, the SW series, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot this in Italian, um, the SW series is the, the one designed for photography, so is able to, uh, I mean, to cover the 99% of uh, the uh, the Adobe RGB color space, but for example, if you are interested more into the entertainment or in gaming, maybe you need something that is just a bit different in terms of panel and in terms of uh, gamut coverage. So again, uh, up to you, but consider that uh, you have many options and according to your specific need, uh, really you will find for sure a solution. At this point, uh, Okay, let's suppose that we just bought a wonderful monitor. So we bought a, a nice BenQ SW321C or a 27270, uh, so one of the latest generation monitor. But we are living on a desert island, so somewhere, of course, in front of the beautiful sea. And uh, we, are working, we are working on our images, so we are post-producing our images that we are capturing on the field and then in the evening. We, we are post-producing them in front of a nice glass of wine. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, on this island where we are living alone, what we see on our monitor is our reality. I mean, uh, if somebody is coming to the island to check our screen, uh, for sure it can uh, say something about uh, his feeling about the picture, but in terms of personal taste. But uh, there is no chance uh, it can say anything about uh, uh, how the monitor it display, is displaying colors. But what happens if we, uh, let's say, we get an uh, internet connection and we, we are able to send for, uh, I don't know, because uh, we bought Starlink and we now are able to, to um, to send by email our picture to, I don't know, to an editor, to a printing website, or just to our parents somewhere in the world. Maybe they will like the picture, but uh, it's uh, more likely that they will be kind of disappointed, or in any case, for sure, they are not going to see the same thing you were seeing on the island. What's the reason about that? Well, I'm. if you think that this is quite strange, I'm quite sure that if you try to think, uh, uh, you already experienced maybe to post-produce one of your image on your laptop, and then when you was looking at this the same picture on your iPad or you know, on your mobile, it was looking different. And if you didn't, because it's your first time in the it's your first step in the world of photography, I'm 100% sure that you experienced. Uh, like the TV wall on a supermarket, when you have these hundreds uh, uh, television in front of you that are displaying the same thing, but somehow they are displaying the same thing in a slightly different way because uh, the contrast is slightly different, because the colors are different, because the the color uh, the the color temperature feeling is different. I'm 100% sure that uh, this is something that happened to you too. So, uh, what's the reason of that? Uh, I will try to explain with the, with the Mexican restaurant example, also because it's almost uh, 
dinner time, I think. So let's go to the Mexican restaurant because the Mexican restaurant is something that I'm, I really love, guys. So if you ever meet me on the field, uh, propose me a Mexican restaurant and I will say yes for sure. So let's go to the Mexican restaurant and I'm 100% sure that you, if you are a lover or not of Mexican food, you are aware of the fact that uh, there is a kind of uh, spicy level of each plate uh, in a scale, for example, from one to four, where one is supposed to be the, 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 the plate not so uh, spicy to the four that is probably impossible to eat. So if I go to a Mexican restaurant, I'm a huge fan of the, um, of the Mexican food. So maybe I will try something that for me is spicy or almost spicy. The problem is that in, uh, in the kitchen we have uh, Pedro or Juan or uh, any other name that you want that is a Mexican guy. Maybe we are the same age, but he's coming from Mexico where he's using to have uh, uh, Mexican food and spicy food as I'm used to pizza, for example. So what is uh, maybe spicy for me is nothing for him. And what is spicy for him is something that is really uh, is impossible to be eaten by me. So what's the, the meaning of this? It's the, the fact that the perception of the spiciness is really dependent on the subject uh, and to the convention that we used. So me and Juan, that we are maybe same age, we are human being, we are the same DNA basically, but for us, uh, the, the same thing, the, the, the spiciness, is completely different or is slightly different, but it will never be the same. So again, the perception of the spiciness is subjective. Uh, how this can be related to photography and to monitor? Because actually is absolutely the same thing. If we uh, take two monitor, maybe two identical monitor, two BenQ monitor that, our, that we just bought, maybe from two different places or even from the same place, and we display on them the same image, the two image will result slightly different. For example, this is just an example to let you understand. We said that we create uh, colors with the, this colored light, uh, and the amount, uh, the intensity of light, the green light, for example, can vary from zero to 250. For example, at the level 200 of the intensity of the light, in one device, the green is something. On the other one, it will be something slightly different. Uh, here, of course, uh, that's just for graphical purposes. So I'm showing you something that probably is not real. I mean, the the, the difference will be probably less, but uh, it's just to let you understand that the two devices will display the same thing in a different way. Why? Because the color is, as, is, as we say, is device dependent. So uh, according to the device, the color will be represented in a different way. And this uh, is due to hundreds of possible reasons from uh, the, the laptop that we are using, because we are using different video cards, because uh, one monitor is older than the other one, because even if they are two uh, identical monitor, one is older, because the material of the two monitor uh, are coming from two different caves. So, I mean, they are physical and real devices, like me and Juan. And, uh, and so we are different, even we are the same, and so, two monitors are going to display the color in a different way. That, of course, is a problem because we need to find a way to manage colors. So we need to find a way to, um, to make the device one identical to the device two, or in any case, to display uh, the same input in, uh, in the same way in the two monitor. How to do that? We do again, as we said, managing color. So uh, to create consistency, consistency across our graphic chain. So the green that we capture with our camera should be the green that we display on our main screen. And it should be the same green that 
somebody else in the world is uh, is seeing if we show is going to view our picture or is the same green that we get from uh, a printed image how to do that well that was really really a complicated thing because uh, a lot of people tried to find a solution and at the end the international color consortium uh, defined a kind of standard uh, in order to, to solve this problem. So basically, everybody that uh, anybody that is going to follow the rule of the International Color Consortium, that I'm sure that you already hear, the ICC, um, if, if you are following their standard, you are able to create images that can be seen by in the same way as you are seeing them by other people that are following the same rule. How to do that? Through what are called ICC profiles. What is an ICC profile? So basically, an ICC profile is a, a physical file that is able to translate the, 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 specific, uh, the specific monitor you have or the specific devices you have into something that is uh, understandable by everybody. So um, this is a really technical and complicated topic, but you have to consider that basically the ICC profile is able to, to convert basically what is more the, the fact that your monitor is unique and is displaying your colors in a, in a very specific way into uh, is translating this way to display colors into a way that is independent by the device. So through what is called a profile connection space. So this could be could, uh, could look very complicated, but is uh, is not something that you have really to to go deep into. You have just to understand that uh, there is a way to display to uh, to describe colors in a in the in the device independent way. So if we are able to describe our colors in this way, we are also able to represent the colors in different uh, display in the same way. You have to consider uh, like uh, an ICC profile, like a translator. For example, let's suppose that one monitor is, uh, is speaking uh, uh, one language and another monitor is speaking another language. So basically, we are using a translator uh, to translate the, the, the specific language that our monitor is speaking to a common language that is not the language of the other device, but is a language that if everybody is going to learn, um, it, it let us to, to communicate without any problem. So the really important thing is to focus on this ICC profile because even again, even without going deep into this, uh, we have just to remember that the ICC profile is the thing that let us to describe let us describe the color in a universal way let's say but how can i get the icc profile is it something that i can download from internet is it something that i should create uh, by hand uh, on my on my laptop of course uh, no uh, it's something that we can't download from internet for our monitor especially but it's something that we have to create because the icc profile again is the description of the specific behavior of our screen. How to create an ICC profile? A create, um, the ICC profile is created by measuring our device. So is, we need to measure the, the specific behavior of our monitor in reproducing color. Um, there are two ways to create ICC profile. One is through a colorimeter and the other one is through a spectrophotometer. Um, consider that basically they are creating the ICC in, let's say they are creating an ICC profile, but one is able to uh, create it uh, also measuring reflective surfaces, uh, like for example, a printed paper. Uh, a colorimeter is able to measure only emitting surfaces. So for example, is, uh, is the one that we are going to use for um, for a monitor because uh, it's cheaper and uh, it's super accurate. Uh, how it works? Basically, um, the, the colorimeter is a physical device that you attach in front of your screen. 
and uh, uh, through a specific software, you're going to display certain, a certain amount of colors on your screen. Uh, the device is basically uh, acquiring the information of the colors that is really displayed and basically uh, is creating a kind of uh, file where it defines, it records every uh, difference that we have from the displayed colors, from the theoretically displayed colors and the one that is physically displayed. It's like to say, I have a software that is able to transmit a color that is for sure that color is a green point zero let's say i want to i, I will display my software will display this green point zero uh, color but we know that our monitor is not perfect so maybe it will describe a green point two and so basically my tiny device is able to record this green point two green color when it's displayed green point zero. And so it's creating basically a list uh, that keeps track of all these errors. So if we save, when we save this file in our computer, uh, so the ICC file that is created is saved in our computer, every time we are going to display an image with a specific, uh, with all the colors that we have, uh, this file, will basically introduce in your image, let's say in the, in the let's say in your image, but is, um, is going to introduce an, an error in the display of your monitor in order to represent the color in the proper way. So that's how ICC profile works. Uh, there are many devices to, that you can consider for um, calibrating and profiling your monitor. Uh, I'm right now using the one of Calibrite that you probably are familiar because they are coming from uh, uh, the X-Ray technology. And uh, actually, according uh, to your specific need, uh, you can have uh, different, uh, you can buy different products. Uh, again, there is a first um, need separation between what is a colorimeter and a spectrophotometer. Basically, a spectrophotometer is able to create the ICC profile on a printer. So if you want to do on a printer, we need to, I suggest you to consider the color check studio. In terms of colorimeter, so just to calibrate your screen, uh, well, it's up to you. Uh, my suggestion probably will be to, to start uh, maybe from a color checker display pro because this device is able to, um, to do what is called, uh, as we said, the hardware calibration. So if you are using this tool uh, with a BenQ monitor, for example, you will be able to take advantage of the fact that some of the information of this uh, profilation, calibration and profilation process can be stored inside, directly inside of your screen. And so the representation of the image will be even more accurate. Uh, if you later have question on this, uh, we, can, uh, we can even discuss deeper on uh, this topic. Uh, as we said, the, the physical device that we attach in front of our screen uh, should be uh, paired with a software. If you are using, um, I don't know, any monitor, maybe your laptop or uh, even your office monitor, you can use directly the software provided by Calibrite that is called CC Profiler, that is able to, again, create this ICC profile. Um, if you're using a BenQ monitor, you can, again, take advantage of the fact that you can store some information inside of the screen directly. And so I suggest you to use uh, the BenQ Palette Master Element software, that is a software that it can be downloaded for free from BenQ website. And uh, again, you can uh, profile and calibrate uh, your monitor in an absolutely easy way. It's not the, um, the moment to, we can't go deeper into real, in the process of the calibration and profilation. But again, if you go to my, my website, uh, there is really a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to profile and calibrate your monitor uh, but there is a, an article, a tutorial for BenQ PME and a tutorial for uh, CC Profiler. So you will find the detailed information. So at the end, uh, if we are at the Mexican restaurant, how can we order the right dish? 
So it's quite easy because uh, again, at the, we, we should do as we will do for our monitor. So basically I will go to the restaurant and I will order all of the four uh, intensity of spiciness. And I will note down what they represent for me, what, how they are spicy for me. So basically I'm making a characterization. So it's like we said to, to take a, a calibrator, a, a colorimeter and to attach it to a display and to start to display different colors in order to read what this color is exactly for uh, this monitor. So I'm going to check for me what is this, uh, this level of spiciness. And so I create a list that could be our ICC profile that I will give to the, the waiter. Then the waiter is able to go to the kitchen, to the chef, in order to uh, order my food as, as spicy as I want, but uh, translating the spiciness information to the chef. So basically, after a kind of standardization that I give to the waiter, the waiter, that is the, the, our ICS profile, is able to translate to the chef, so to the video card of, uh, um, of, our, uh, of our laptop, for example, uh, how to display the right color, uh, the color that I really want. In this case, the, the, the Mexican dish with the spiciness that I really want. Or, in other words, we are able to really to, to display the, the same picture in two completely different displays. Because, for example, this is a comparison between my laptop, that is a MacBook, and a BenQ SW321C monitor. So, another technology, another level of quality, but they are displaying the exact same things. And all of, and this is thanks to the ICC profile that I created with my Calibrite uh, device. Perfect. I think that uh, we need to start the Q&A session because uh, we are at the end. So I, I really thank you very much and I hope that you found this, uh, this webinar interesting. So uh, let's check if we have some, some question from you. And uh, please, these are my contacts. You can uh, find me again on uh, Instagram, Facebook. You can send me a mail or you can contact me through the website. So if at the end of the time we have left, uh, uh, you have still question, you can uh, write to me. So uh, let's check. In the meanwhile, I will turn on the webcam again. So hello again. Oh my God, I need some water. So, Hubert, why is the is the, uh, uh, okay? Wait, because the is scrolling down. Okay, why is this 90-90% of Adobe RGB? There is so much outside this monitor that not of course. So yes, okay, uh, Adobe RGB. Uh, is uh, the standard that now we are using because uh, uh, is the is the way we can translate the, the what we see on a screen uh, on uh, a printed paper. And uh, even if uh, we we can see more things uh, and maybe we can have screen that nowadays are even more capable to reproduce even more colors. Uh, uh, again, a, fine art, a cotton fine art paper like uh, the Hannibal that I'm using uh, has a uh, defined uh, uh, gamut. So we need to use uh, Adobe, um, the Adobe RGB because uh, is the best match we can have uh, with uh, um, with a printed paper. Then. Uh, 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 can one calibrate with the USB-C cable? It will not affect the quality. Absolutely, yes. You can calibrate with the USB-C cable. Actually, I'm doing it. Uh, it's not abs affecting absolutely the quality. Actually, is uh, even um, solving some issue because if we are not using the USB-C 
connection between the monitor and your laptop, for example, uh, you have to use an additional USB cable in order to, uh, to transfer the data because the display port cable or the HDMI cable is able only to uh, deliver the video signal, so the, the, info, the visual information. And we need something to uh, feed the, the laptop and the monitor with data. With the USB, we have everything in one single cable, so it's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely reliable and you can get absolutely great result. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, okay, if I develop my images in Profoto, that we said that is the color palette, the big, huge one, should I be printing in Adobe RGB to get the best result? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, every time, so that's uh, something that you probably don't know, every time you open your RAW file into Camera Raw, that is uh, on Photoshop or in Lightroom, uh, again, to transform this RAW, this amount of data into something that we can see, we have to apply a color profile. Uh, by default, uh, Camera Raw is applying to this row uh, something that is kind of close uh, to, um, to Profoto RGB. So it's using something big to uh, translate uh, your colors. And that could be nice until you, you just want to see the colors on your screen. But the moment that you want to translate uh, uh, this amount of color into something that can be reproduced by uh, uh, a sheet of paper, uh, you have to consider the gamut of this paper. And the, the Profoto color profile is too wide because there are more colors than the one that can re be reproduced by our paper. So we need to uh, make a sort of conversion of this uh, Profoto RGB into a Adobe RGB color space in order to transform the information that we are available into something that is smaller so we are using a less a bit less of color uh, but this color are the maximum amount of color that can be reproduced uh, into the into our fine art uh, print so it's absolutely important to do if you don't do what happened that you are describing the picture with a lot of color you are going to print this huge amount of color into the paper the paper is not able to reproduce all this color and basically you are going to lose some shades of color so you are losing colors you are not managing color because you are not you are not uh, i mean you are going to miss some maybe shades of uh, colors uh, and saturation so it's definitely not suggested okay let's move on uh, 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 uh. Let's see, eh, 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 okay, how much? Okay, for a photographer is uh, suggested a SW or a PD monitor from BenQ, uh, Caterina. So Caterina, um, it really depends on you because uh, both of them, uh, they have all the good, they have this kind of uh, basic uh, features that are in my opinion, uh, absolutely mandatory for a photographer from university, uh, uniformity, resolution, and whatever. Uh, the SW is a series that is able to reproduce up to the 99% of uh, um, uh, color space. The PD uh, is designed to uh, something else, uh, is going to match other is for a designer word, so it's more focused on other characteristic, uh, is not able to reach the 99% of Adobe RGB. So if you are not super interested into the printing world, let's say, a PD uh, series could be enough. If you think that one day or you're already involved into the, the wonderful world of printing, uh, I think that uh, the SW is a really great investment also because uh, is, uh, is, uh, the price tag is uh, quite low for this kind of uh, professional tool, so it's really suggested in my opinion. Uh, mm, do you need to match the color profile taken by the camera when shooting in RAW to the software used? Actually, uh, yeah, if I get the question, uh, in your camera, usually you are able to set uh, the color profile 
Adobe RGB or sRGB. But remember that this setting is absolutely useless. This setting is only if you are going to save your image in the camera in JPEG mode, because basically what you are going to do in the software uh, in Lightroom is done by the computer by the camera itself uh, before. If we are shooting in RAW, it's absolutely uh, nonsense to apply any of this setting because it's not applied to the file. Again, the raw file is just an amount of data. It, it becomes a picture only when we open it in camera raw, for example, and it's becoming a picture because camera raw is assigning to this amount of data the color profile that is almost pro photo RGB. So it's describing the amount of data uh, with a specific palette of colors. So it's absolutely uh useless to set in your camera any uh, specific color space uh, okay let's check if there is a last question and then i think uh, we are really at the end let's see if i miss something uh okay in there is a question about palette master that uh, there are a few version uh, that are not working properly in Windows. Um, well, uh, I suggest you um, maybe send me, Masha, send me a mail because I will try to help you. Uh, usually the latest uh, version of Palette Master Element, because it's a software that is updated constantly, is able to fix all the previous issue. Uh, but if you have uh, any limitation in selecting the 16-bit uh, lockup table, maybe you need to, to try to, to use an older version if you was working with that version and it was working before. So hard to say like that, but uh, we can go deep on this. Uh, uh, um, let's see if I have something left. Uh, I think no, I think everything is answered. So, okay, I think we are at the end. So thanks again. So I would like to thanks again. Um, thank you Calibrite for offering us this uh, wonderful webinar. And uh, also the, the Norwegian reseller Stavanger because it's going to give you this the discount code if you want to uh, buy a monitor or something uh, related to the, the calibration world, so some calibrate product, and in the chat you will be able to find the, uh, the discount code uh, to be used on their uh, store. So again, uh, Stavanger Photo is the place to go after the end of this webinar. Okay, so no more question, and um, so it's time to say you goodbye. Uh, it was really a pleasure to be with you tonight, and so I really hope that it was uh, something interesting. Again, if you have any additional question or if you want to go deeper on these topics, uh, feel free to to write me, and I will be more than happy to to help you to enjoy even more the color management world. So thanks again, and have a wonderful evening. Ciao.